There's a passage where the Buddha extols contentment as one of the basic values of the Dharma practice. But then there's another one where he says that it was because he didn't allow himself to stay content with his skillful qualities that he was able to attain awakening. Which means that we have to figure out where does contentment apply and where does it not. It basically applies to your physical surroundings, the things you have. When the Buddha talks about the customs of the Noble Ones, he says, being content with whatever clothing you have, whatever food you have, whatever shelter you have. This is one of the customs of the Noble Ones. But that doesn't mean you don't take care of these things or improve them. And there are lots of instructions about how when you get a hole in your robes you have to mend it. When your shelter is in danger, when the roof is leaking and termites are invading, you have to do what you can to protect it. So this isn't a lazy kind of contentment. It means that you accept what you've got, but then you do your best with it. You look after it well. And so it's that element of wanting to make the most of what you've got. That's where the discontent comes in. In other words, you figure there's something more I can do with what I've got, I'll try. You accept where you are, but you also accept the fact that where you are has some potential for growing. That's the fourth of the customs of the Noble Ones, is that you take joy in developing, you take joy in abandoning. And that applies directly to the mind. You take joy in developing good qualities and abandoning unskillful qualities. And whatever helps you in that direction, that's part of the practice, too. So you don't just sit here with whatever comes up, allowing yourself to be assailed by whatever. There's something you can do to direct the mind in a skillful direction to get it on the path. That's what you do. For instance, with the breath. When the breath is not going well, when it feels uncomfortable, when it feels laborious, strained. You watch it for a while, but not so that you just sit with it. You watch it so you try to figure it out. What is it about the breath that's uncomfortable? Why is it uncomfortable? Is it the way I'm holding my body? Is it the way I'm focused on the breath? Some people, when they decide to concentrate on the breath, just clamp down on all the energy in the body, and of course it's going to be uncomfortable. So you think about opening things up, letting the energy come in from all directions. You're not here to clamp down or to grab hold of the breath. You're just to touch the breath and maintain contact with the breath. Think of it that way. And this is one of the areas where you're encouraged to develop as much as you can. Develop the conditions for allowing the mind to settle down so it does have a good, solid place to stay. And then you apply the same principle to the mind. What in the mind can you change? What can you not change yet? Any unskillful qualities that come up in the mind, you don't simply accept the fact, oh yeah, there's a lot of greed, there's a lot of aversion, there's a lot of lust, there's a lot of fear, jealousy, whatever. You don't deny the fact that they're there, but you accept this as your starting point. You accept the fact that you can develop the mind, you can change the mind. This is what the Buddhist teachings on karma are all about. We tend to miss this because we misunderstand karma. We think it's all about what you did in the past. But for the Buddha, the important karma is what you're doing right now. What you do with the raw material at the present moment, how you shape it, 
because you're shaping it all the time, you might as well shape it in a good direction. So this is what it means to be discontent with skillful qualities. Not that you're always rushing to get to the next step, but realizing there's area for the mind to develop. You take what you've got and you make the most of what you've got. That's where the contentment comes in. See, these are all the raw materials I've got. Well, let's see what I can make with them. It's like all those software designers that come from India. They say that back in the past decades, the computers in India were really low-powered. And so to design good software, the designers were forced to figure out the most efficient way of doing things. And as a result, they became really expert. They took their limitations and they used them to their advantage. So if you find you've got limitations in your practice, well, see what you can do to use them to your advantage, what lessons you can learn from them, how you make the most of what you've got. You accept what you've got, but you accept also that it has growth potential, and you want it to go in the right direction. After all, this is a path we're on. If the path didn't go anywhere, the Buddha would have called it the Eightfold Noble Spot. But it's a path, and paths have starting points and they have ending points. And your starting point is where you are right now. And you're headed in a direction. You want to be headed to freedom. That's what the substance, what, that's what the essence of the teaching is all about. We're going someplace. You start where you are, look at what you've got, and then you figure out how can I make the most of this. That's with John Lee in Method 2. He was off in the jungle. He'd walked three days into that spot, and soon after he got there he had a heart attack. There was no medicine. The food he had was actually bad for your heart. It was mainly Hill Tribe's food, and they ate a lot of bamboo sprouts, bamboo shoots. And one of the things I learned in town is, if you have a heart disease, stay away from bamboo shoots. But that was all he had. So what was he going to do? He had his breath. And so he worked with that. Figuring out how to breathe in a way that would give strength back to his body, that would mend his heart and mend all the damage that had been done by the heart attack. And at the end of the rains retreat, he was able to walk out. So he faced the fact that he had a lot of limitations, but he made the most of what offered the most potential for growth. And that's an attitude you have to take toward everything in life. whether it's school, it's your work, whatever you do. You have to accept what limitations you have and then recognize where your potential strengths are, what has the most growth potential, given the situation you have right now, and you work on that. You don't just sit there and say, well, I'll just be content with the way things are. It's like a farmer lying out in his field. I'm content with the fact that my field is growing weeds. That's the farmer's attitude. He doesn't get to eat. His family doesn't get to eat. Nobody else gets the food. Everybody dies. So contentment means accepting where you are. But for the purpose of the practice, you have to be motivated by a certain discontent. You realize there is suffering, and you realize there's something you can do about it. And you gather all together all the strengths that you do have, and you work on those. 
And you, you find that as you develop those strengths, others come along. There will, of course, be obstacles in the path. But you don't want that to discourage you. There was a story I read one time of a man studying with a Zen teacher in the Midwest. He was decided he wanted to come out to Hollywood and try his luck. I've forgotten whether it was a screenwriter or what. And so I went to say goodbye to his teacher, and his teacher said, Well, what if you go out there and you get knocked down? And the guy said, well, I guess I'll just have to accept that. And he hadn't even finished the sentence when the teacher said, no, they knock you down, you get back up again. They knock you down a second time, you get up a second time. You don't give up. If you realize that something is really good, really worthwhile, you do whatever you can. That's the discontent that led to the Buddha's, the Buddha's awakening. You don't rest where you are. So if you have a good understanding of how to mingle contentment and discontent in the practice, you'll have a sure footing and you'll go far.